The Supreme Court handed President Biden a defeat this week when it ruled that he can't undo a Trump-era immigration policy known as Remain in Mexico. The Remain in Mexico policy required asylum seekers to await their immigration court date on the southern side of the border and was one of several Trump initiatives that Biden suspended immediately upon taking office. Since a 6-3 majority of the high court said they ended the policy improperly, Biden administration officials must now reinstate it. Justices cited a ruling that came during the Trump administration, when the Supreme Court blocked former President Trump's efforts to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, program that allowed children brought to the U.S. illegally to stay. Democrats celebrated the decision at the time, although that same authority was used to stop Biden from undoing his predecessor's immigration policy as well. The Department of Homeland Security said it plans to appeal the decision, with which it said it, quote, respectfully disagrees. Biden has weathered criticism for his handling of an immigration crisis at the border, which critics attribute to Biden's complete reversal of the Trump policies that had kept illegal border crossings low. While the Remain in Mexico policy has been largely dormant for months, DHS said it will now make a, quote, good faith effort to comply with the ruling. The Supreme Court decision is a blow to the Biden immigration agenda at a time when the White House is juggling multiple crises. It could force the administration to rethink its approach to the situation at the border. Sarah Westwood for the Washington Examiner. The Supreme Court has ordered the Biden administration to reinstate the Remain in Mexico policy. It comes as Border Patrol arrests almost 8,700 criminals who are in the country illegally, even though they don't have as much manpower as they need. The Trump-era policy that is to be reinstated requires people to wait in Mexico while their case to get asylum is heard. The Supreme Court said the Biden administration did not show that it wasn't acting hastily and without reason when it struck down the Remain in Mexico policy. The legal term is acting in an arbitrary and capricious manner. And now the high court is citing its decision in 2020 not to strike down the DACA program for the same reason. Biden had suspended the Remain in Mexico policy in January, and the DHS officially terminated it in June. The move caused Texas and Missouri to file a lawsuit, saying DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas did not provide justification for suspending it. All this while Border Patrol agents arrest nearly 8,700 criminals who entered the country illegally. Together, they have committed over 12,000 crimes. In August, agents arrested two MS-13 gang members. One was a convicted murderer from El Salvador who was taken into custody after illegally crossing the border near Mission, Texas. Most of these criminals are arrested while trying to evade border patrol or they attempt to blend into large crowds crossing the border. But while agents are dealing with large groups, cartels take the opportunity to smuggle people and contraband through the areas nearby that officers aren't patrolling. Agents have told the Epic Times that they are only arresting about 15% of all border crossers, though the number who have gone undetected or avoided capture is difficult to estimate. Colleague and friend of Bill Malusian in La Jolla, Texas, Bill, uh, the, the, the recent developments there and the, con and the comments of the congressman notwithstanding is that now they're trying to say, the Supreme Court is trying to say, continue adjudicating these cases of those trying to get here and keep them in Mexico as President Trump had wanted, not in the United States as uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden uh, 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 has wanted to do. Um, I'm wondering whether that's changed the dynamics and what you're covering has changed as a result. Well, border agents tell us it's going to have a big impact down here on the border, and Texas Governor Greg Abbott is calling the Supreme Court's decision a major victory for the state of Texas because essentially what it means is that from this point forward, when migrants show up here at the border and they claim asylum, they're no longer going to be able to just be released in mass into the United States with a, a notice to appear for a, a future court date down the road. Instead, they're going to have to go back to Mexico and wait over there for their for their case to play out here in the U.S. That's what President Trump was doing when he was in office. He said it essentially ended catch and release. But when President Biden took over, he got rid of that policy. Now the Supreme Court is saying, nope, you got to bring it back. And DHS is already responding to this ruling. If we can pull up this statement, they're saying in part, quote, 
The Department of Homeland Security respectfully disagrees with the district court's decision and regrets that the Supreme Court declined to issue a stay. DHS has appealed the district court's order and will continue to vigorously challenge it. As the appeal process continues, however, DHS will comply with the order in good faith. And as you take a look at drone video we shot out here in La Jolla this morning as migrants were being apprehended, the big question is how soon will the Biden administration be able to actually implement this ruling? There were rumors over the weekend that this was going to happen, and La Jolla police out here tell us there was actually kind of a rush on the border over the weekend with migrants trying to get across last minute. Take a listen. This weekend was uh, very chaotic. We had in less than an hour uh, about 200 people or more crossing through our area. So we did see a huge spike from Friday to actually yesterday. And then take a look at this photo right here. It looks like a legitimate Border Patrol vehicle, right? Wrong. It's a total fake. This is pretty bizarre. This is out of Border Patrol's Tucson sector. Agents there were able to foil a human smuggling uh, plot where that smuggler was able to basically clone a Border Patrol vehicle, dress it up and make it look legit. He had a fake Border Patrol uniform on and he had 10 illegal immigrants inside the car with him. He was arrested. They were all taken into custody, but stuff like this happening down here at the border every single day, Neil. We'll send it back to you. Incredible, my friend. Uh, Bill Malusian, thank you. Uh, in La Jolla, Texas. The U.S. Supreme Court says the Biden administration has to reinstate a Trump era policy known as Remain in Mexico, formerly known as Migrant Protection Protocols. The policy says migrants have to stay in Mexico while they wait for their U.S. immigration court dates. President Biden lifted that policy shortly after taking office. But now the Supreme Court is saying Biden's decision to end it was arbitrary and capricious. It's the same exact standard they used back when Trump was trying to get rid of DACA. Uh, the same standard was used that you're not making it a compelling enough argument as to why should this order be lifted. Simon Nasseri, a local immigration attorney, says his clients will have to stay in Mexico many of whom are living in shelters and encampments in Tijuana. The court's decision was a result of lawsuits filed by Texas and Missouri, who said lifting the policy placed a burden on local governments who were faced with an influx of migrants. Nasseri says some progress was being made. Some of those cases were starting to move forward. People were, some people were getting paroled in and being able to complete their cases on a case-by-case -case basis. But for the most part, it has been extremely hectic. He says the pandemic has placed many obstacles for asylum seekers, including a backlog in the courts. Some of them haven't seen a judge for over a year. You know, they haven't had their case called. So we're going back beyond the pandemic, people waiting down there for a court date, and they're still waiting. Their case number still hasn't been called. No one has contacted them. Nasseri says there's a lot of work that lies ahead, with thousands waiting for their immigration cases to be heard. You have thousands of people here in the U.S., who are waiting for something to happen there. So the Biden administration is fighting the immigration battle on more than one front. Alexandra Rangel, KPBS News. Last night, Supreme Court ruling against the Biden administration plan to repeal the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. This deals with asylum seekers. What does it mean for the crisis at the border? Bill Malugian knows better than most. Live again today, La Jolla, Texas. Bill, good morning there. Bill, good morning to you. Look, this could have a monumental impact on the crisis down here at the border. Essentially, what this ruling means is that when migrants show up here to the United States and they claim asylum, they will no longer be able to just be released into the U.S. with a court date and wait here for their case to play out. Instead, they're going to have to go back to Mexico and wait over there. This was Trump's policy. He argued it ended catch and release. Biden got rid of it once he took over. Well, now the Supreme Court is saying, nope, you got to reinstate it. And take a look at this. DHS is already responded to this decision, writing in part, quote, the Department of Homeland Security respectfully disagrees with the district court's decision and regrets that the Supreme Court decided to issue, uh, d declined to issue a stay. DHS has appealed to the district court's order and will continue to vigorously challenge it. As the appeal process continues, however, DHS will comply with the order in good faith. And as you take a look at drone video we just, uh, just shot here this morning of migrants being apprehended, the question is, how how soon will they implement this order? Uh, there were rumors this was going to happen over the weekend, and La Jolla PD out here says there was a rush on the border with migrants trying to get through before it happened. Take a listen. 
this weekend was uh, very chaotic. We had in less than an hour uh, about 200 people or more crossing through our area. We did see a huge spike from Friday to actually yesterday. And then take a look at this photo out of Border Patrol's Yuma sector. This is a 43-year-old Nicaraguan woman they caught crossing illegally. She's an aggravated felon. Listen to her laundry list of convictions. First-degree murder, arson, armed robbery, burglary, and kidnapping. She's going to be prosecuted for re-entry and deported back to Nicarag uh, Nicaragua. And to wrap up, take a look at this final photo right here. Looks like an average Border Patrol vehicle, right? Well, it's not. It's a total fake. This was in Border Patrol's Tucson sector where agents there uh, foiled a human smuggling attempt. Uh, that smuggler essentially cloned a Border Patrol vehicle and had a fake Border Patrol uniform on. Didn't work out for him, though. He got arrested, and the 10 migrants he had with him were all taken into custody. Wow. Just another typical weekend down here at the border. We'll send all, it back to you. All in a two-minute report. It's astounding. Bill Malusian, La Jolla, Texas. Thanks. A driver was recently caught smuggling 10 migrants in a cloned Border Patrol car. Tucson Sector's Interim Chief John R. Maudlin shared this photo you see right here on social media today, saying this is not a Border Patrol car. He said Tucson agents stopped the smuggling attempt. The driver and the migrants were taken into custody. No other details were made available. Also developing tonight, dozens of migrants, including children, are in custody after coming ashore off South Florida waters. Local Times Christian Del Rosa live in Key Biscayne with what we just learned about this investigation. Christian. Well, first, this was such a dramatic, intense scene, heartbreaking, of course, because of those children tonight. We can confirm all of the migrants have been accounted for. A little boy carried by a federal agent to safety and a woman clearly struggling as authorities help her get off a rescue boat and onto a stretcher before being transported to the hospital. Our camera is rolling as Border Patrol, Customs and Border Protection, and Miami-Dade Police responded Monday afternoon. Dozens of migrants spotted hiding inside this boat, trying to get ashore at Key Biscayne. Some of them making it onto land and fleeing from authorities. Officers chasing down these three men, detaining them on the median along Crandon Boulevard. And we were there at the Crandon Park Golf Course where witnesses pointed agents to several others trying to run away from officers. Two were tracked down and detained. Homeland Security officials say a total of 42 men, women, and children were being smuggled to the U.S. from Haiti. I am heartbroken, but not surprised. Alexandra Odat is a Haitian American and an immigration attorney. She says the migrants' arrival shouldn't be a surprise in light of Haiti's earthquake crisis. And she hopes they get due process instead of being immediately sent back. My hope is that all 42 of them will be given a parole and they will be released to their relatives, their friends, their loved ones, and that they will be given an opportunity to be heard in court in a non-detained setting. Well, tonight, the Border Patrol tells us all of the 42 Haitians are in their custody as the investigation into their arrival continues. We're live in Key Biscayne. I'm Christian De La Rosa, Local 10 News. It is a story often told, but still hard for many to grasp. The journey of migrants attempting to cross the border into South Texas in unforgiving terrain. August has been an especially deadly month. The Brooks County Sheriff tells us they have recovered 78 migrant bodies this year. A 200% increase, 13 since last Sunday. Now there's a documentary, Missing in Brooks County. There is a free outdoor screening tomorrow evening at the Inn on the Riverwalk. Our Jesse DeGoyado now with a preview. The Border Patrol Station is making these people walk in that deep sand with very little water. Stunned by so many of their bodies being found. He used to get to me. So now it kind of, you know, I think we, we don't call them people anymore, we call them bodies. Filmmakers spent almost five years documenting those who find them. An illegal alien crosser is an illegal alien crosser. Others tracking down the people out there still trying. This is the South Texas Human Rights Center. And those dedicated to helping them any way they can. But above all, it's really about the families. The film shows the agonizing search by a family looking for their loved one who'd spent most of his life in Houston. Homero Roman had tried coming back after being deported 
when he got a traffic ticket. My brother tried his hardest to get accustomed to life over there, but life is just not the same without your family. That was a number of years ago already, and um, they have no idea what happened to him. I mean, he went missing in Brooks County. That's the last he was heard from. In spite of what a Brooks County dispatcher told them. There's been a lot of, a lot of missing people. You know, they won't ever give up looking. Sadder still, she says. More people are coming, more people are dying. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. That documentary will also be shown in Brooks County later on this month. We have more information on the film and the upcoming screenings of Missing in Brooks County on our website at ksat.com. It happens all the time. Human smugglers risking migrants' lives, taking them on treacherous hikes through rough terrain during the hot summer months trying to make it to the U.S. Tonight, News 8's Tim Blodgett brings us an up-close, first-hand look at the dangers they face. Thursday morning, agents from Border Patrol, San Diego sector, invited members of the media deep within the Otai Mountains. Every day, the agency responsible for securing the U.S.-Mexico border apprehends those trying to cross into the United States illegally. From the Pacific Ocean to the rugged mountain ranges and to the blazing desert, San Diego sector covers 60 miles of border. The vastness and difficult terrain of the area makes it imperative that Border Patrol be supplied with the latest equipment and infrastructure to fight illegal immigration. The all-weather roads also provide for the rapid response of agents and other emergency medical services when lives are on the line. Enhancements in technology also aid agents in rapidly identifying the locations of individuals after entering illegally. While the latest technology has been a game changer for Border Patrol, this is a job that only gets done by having boots on the ground. Around 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, I accompanied Border Patrol and members of the local media on a hike through the mountains, used by migrants daring enough to brave the rugged terrain and harsh conditions. The hike could be brutal, a steep incline with loose rocks, no defined trail, which means you run into thorny bushes. But it was obvious that many had been through the area. Empty water bottles littered the ground throughout the hike. So far it's a fairly breezy and overcast day. A lot of the times you'll get temperatures in the 90s and 100s out here. There's animals, rattlesnakes, spiders, bugs, all that good stuff. But on top of that, you can even see right, if you look behind us, there's fog. So at night and even during the day in the early morning, the fog rolls in, it's easy to get lost. So this hike that maybe took us around five hours to finish will take some migrant groups two or three days to get around as they're not going directly up. They're zigzagging, they're trying to avoid border patrol and all of this brush around me makes it even harder. So you can tell that the imprints are pretty fine themselves. Uh, it's probably within the last, I don't know, probably last hours. eight hours. These hills are like agents Juan Torres and Jeff Stevens' backyard. They've patrolled this area on foot for years, and they're here to outwit the coyotes, smugglers who are paid huge sums of money to get people across the border by any means necessary. They're just looking for profit and power when you find somebody out here who's deceased, when you come across a body. It's pretty, pretty awful. Somebody brought them out here and left them for dead, and that's pretty sad. Ultimately, Border Patrol says their mission is to preserve human life. After walking these remote trails, I could see just how dangerous this area could be, especially in the dark or in the blistering heat. It's an extremely dangerous area. The people that cross this area, they put the, their lives in the hands of the smugglers, which ultimately are just looking for profit and don't really care about the lives uh, of the people that they're crossing. Tim Blodgett, News 8. We've heard from law enforcement in countries along the border saying that they are overwhelmed by the number of people crossing the border illegally. So much so that they're getting help from other agencies, including right here in the Houston area. Investigator Robert Arnold spoke with two local constables and has that story. The elected constables for precincts two and four in Galveston County are on the border helping a sheriff's office overwhelmed by the current crisis. They spoke with KPRC2 investigates from Kinney County, which is about two hours west of San Antonio. The law enforcement down here is overextended. Constables Justin West and Jimmy Fullen answered the call for help. The landowners out there, the cattle owners, they're having their fences tore down, their cattle are getting out. So it's, it's a major problem. Where we're at in Kinney County, there have been over 500% increase in calls for service since the beginning of the year. In Kinney County only has six deputies, which is why the sheriff asked for help. 
State troopers and Texas Rangers are also in the area as part of Governor Greg Abbott's initiative to arrest migrants who cross the border illegally and commit state crimes like trespassing. The constables say a rail depot is a hot spot for migrants traveling north. Any of the northbound trains coming from the Eagle Pass area that are coming up, we're guaranteed you're going to get them each time. We're seeing people from all over, and, and that includes other continents. It's not just local law enforcement. Border Patrol is overwhelmed, too. They're releasing people on the honor system. Laredo Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar says this year, 55,000 migrants have been released from Border Patrol custody without formal notices to appear in immigration court. Cuellar says many times agents are handling so many migrants at once, they only have time to run criminal background checks. Cuellar says these individuals have been ordered to report to an ICE office within 60 days. The honor system, in my opinion, doesn't work. That's not the best system to use in the immigration process. We have been asking the federal government how many of those released without notices to appear have shown up at ICE offices. We have yet to receive a response. Congressman Cuellar's office is also asking for the same information. Robert Arnold, KPRC 2 News. Yeah, holding facilities are not overcrowded at this time around, but News 11's Arlet Youssef has more on the rising numbers at the border. Border Patrol agents have a network of support that extends across the nation, and they say it's working. Customs and Border Protection officers from around the country are helping process undocumented immigrants as they're brought in. Agents say it's making a big difference. Even with the influx of five to 600 entries a day, um, with this extra processing, we've been able to get them in, um, get them processed, and get them out. A surge of more than 1,000 migrants would normally cause delays in processing and extend the time a migrant is in CBP custody. We can only hold, you know, 1,200 or so at a time. You know, five, 600 a day becomes a big math problem. But agents have been able to maintain a steady grip this time, despite the high number of apprehensions. And being able to rotate you know, those new 500 coming in uh, within that 72 hours, and that, that, that's helping out dramatically. Agents are able to work in larger groups as a result. It's made life better for our agents. It made life better for the migrants coming in, um, and it's eased a lot of the challenges in our uh, detention facilities. Dulesky says the agency will take all the help it can get to keep holding facilities from overcrowding and get everyone processed as fast as possible. Reporting in Yuma, Arlette Youssef, News 11. A Texas House committee could decide this week to boost spending for border security. This comes as Border Patrol agents warn they are blown away by the crisis and are getting burnt out. Joining us now to weigh in, Texas Congressman Michael Burgess. Good morning to you, sir. So we're hearing morning, that Border Carly. Patrol agents are getting burnt out, and it's probably, you got to listen to these numbers. In Del Rio, Texas, just 12 Border Patrol agents are patrolling the entire 245-mile stretch of the border. Just 12 agents. All the other agents are busy doing paperwork. What's your reaction to that? Well, it's absolutely unacceptable, and, and of course, grateful for the for the help the state is providing. But but this is a federal responsibility. This is not something that uh, the state government should even be having to. to participate in a debate, because the money should come from the federal government to provide for Customs and Border Protection and for Border Patrol. Uh, the fact that we're not is, is really a travesty, and especially given in light of the fact of just the, the sheer volume, the numbers of illegal crossings that occurred during the month of July, you would think the federal government would step up and provide additional funding, but that is unfortunately not the case. Yeah, but in, in the month of July, over 200,000 uh, border encounters, and we were talking about those 12 agents in the Del Rio sector. Some sectors aren't sending any agents at all. Take a listen to this. There are many shifts where some stations deploy zero agents to the field because our priority has become simply getting people through the system as quickly as possible so that we can make room for the next people that are inevitably going to cross. And, you know, I think that the border situation and the situation in Afghanistan are linked because now you have yes. a terror group um, in control of, of Afghanistan and the terror threat in the United States has risen and we have a porous border. So should the American people feel safe? Well, 
this needs to be taken care of. And it is, again, this is a federal responsibility. No, I think right now people understandably would, would not feel safe. Uh, originally you had uh, cartels and gang members. Now you have, who knows, uh, coming across. And without operational control of the border, all of that is at risk. Look, the federal government yesterday in the Rules Committee, uh, they deemed the passage of a $3.5 trillion Bernie Sanders budget, deemed it passed when the rule passes. We didn't even get to debate it. We didn't even get to try to allocate the money where it needs to go. But the money needs to go to the border. The money needs to go to national defense. First and foremost, that is our constitutional responsibility. Yeah, and, you know, this week, uh, lawmakers in Texas, they're going to be talking about increased border spending because Governor Abbott is trying to build the border wall on his own. But uh, you say that that shouldn't be a state responsibility. You think that should be a federal responsibility. It, it absolutely is a federal responsibility. Mm. And furthermore, the monies that they are having to expend to do our job, the federal government's job, should be reimbursed to the state. Texas Department of Public Safety has done a, a phenomenal job in trying to be the, the backstop at the border, but that's not their original intent. They're out there supposed to be uh, in, in enforcing the, the, the traffic laws on the highways. They're not supposed to be enforcing border protection. Yeah. And, you know, there's another big update in Texas that we want to get to. There was a hearing yesterday on the Texas voting law, and that was made possible by uh, three Democrats who broke ranks with the rest of their party, and they came back to work. These are the runaway Democrats that some of them are now showing up. So it sounds like there will be enough people, uh, enough lawmakers in Texas to possibly pass this uh, voting reform law. So now that this uh, situation is sort of coming to a close, what is your um, reaction to the saga of the runaway Texas Democrats. Well, it, it, it never should have happened. It, it, it was heartbreaking to watch. Look, I'm in the minority in Washington, D.C. Every day I come to work, I know I am going to lose, but I still come to work. That's our job. That's the office that you ran for. That's the job you said you could do. So it was uh, it was a travesty to have the House of the State House not be able to conduct its business through uh, one and a half special sessions at great expense to the state because people simply didn't show up for work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's unacceptable. Those positions need to be vacated in the next election and find someone who will actually work for you. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see when that bill, uh, that voting reform bill hits Governor Abbott's desk. It could be pretty soon. Congressman yes. Michael Burgess, thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you. You bet.